Hey guys, I'm Eric. And I'm Grace. We're the Wandering Ravens. We are a couple of Americans currently living in the UK. Love being able to say that. And today we are going to be doing a health checkup on the USA and the UK to see if we can settle that age-old question, which country is healthier. We are very excited about this video and have spent well over six hours researching this thing. As a result, we have a ton of sources for you linked in the description below. This video is going to have a lot of numbers and statistics in it, and we don't want to get anything wrong, so we're going to be doing a fair amount of reading. We've got our script right here just to make sure we don't get any numbers incorrect. If you want to read along with us, we have shared our full script on our Patreon. Link to that is in the description. But don't worry, despite the reading, this video will still be pretty entertaining, I hope, and we have included a game to make it that way. What we're going to be doing is going through several different health categories, awarding points to each country based on performance, and at the end of the video we'll total up all the points to see which country truly is the healthiest. What are your predictions? If you think you already know which country is healthier, comment that down below. But don't jump to conclusions too quickly because there actually are some surprising statistics here. At least they did surprise me. Were you surprised? I was not surprised because I'm all knowing. Oh. Just kidding, I was <laughs> surprised. First up, let's compare drinking in the US and USA. Wait, US and USA? <laughs> First up, let's look at drinking statistics in the UK and USA. The first thing we're gonna look at is the percentage of people in each country that drinks alcohol regularly. In Great Britain, 57% of people over the age of 16 drink alcohol every single week. Our source for this is the ONS office for Office. Office. Our source for this is the ONS Office for National Statistics, and for some reason they did not include Northern Ireland in their statistic number percentage thing, and so that is why it says Great Britain specifically. Now, over on the American side of things, 50.7% of Americans say they drink alcohol at least once a month. You probably noticed that the UK statistic is based on weekly consumption, whereas the American one is based on monthly consumption, so we can safely assume that the American number is actually smaller than that 50.7. All that to say, our first health point goes to the United States because the US definitely has less regular drinkers than the UK. America. Next up, we are going to be looking at percentages of teetotalers. In Great Britain, 20.4% of the population are teetotalers. That's a yeah. lot of dry Brits. I suppose it's just the babies, though. <laughs> it's just it's the babies. <laughs> it's just the babies. All of the <laughs> under 16-year-olds. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the United States, 30% of Americans don't drink any alcohol. It's even more babies. Even more babies. <laughs> <laughs> On that note though, I do believe each of these surveys, both the ONS and the American Studies, only surveyed adults of drinking age. Our second health point goes to the United States as well because there are more American teetotalers than Brits and not drinking alcohol is healthier than drinking alcohol. <laughs> But, and this is where it gets interesting, now it's time to move into the next category, which is deaths related to alcohol. Bear with us. Time to talk about brown bread. The UK registers 7,500 alcohol-related deaths per year, which is 1.2% of all British deaths. In total, there are 616,000 deaths in the UK every year. Hmm. This does not include deaths related to coronavirus. Now on the US side of things, the USA registers 72,500 alcohol-related deaths every single year, which is 2.5% of all deaths. Total deaths in the United States number 2,813,503 deaths per year. This does not include deaths related to coronavirus. And because the United States alcohol related deaths are 2.5% of all deaths compared to the UK's 1.2% of all deaths, the health point here actually goes to the UK. <laughs> So I found this really interesting. Despite there being more drinkers in the UK and despite the fact that Brits consume a higher volume of alcohol, there is actually less alcohol related deaths mm. as a percentage of total death in the UK than in the USA. So does that mean that you guys are just more responsible with your alcohol consumption than mm. in the US? Like you're less likely to get into a car and drive because I'm assuming many of these are related to 
Yeah, probably DUIs. a lot of a lot of the American ones are related to DUIs. We should probably do a follow-up video to this one, maybe crime statistics in the UK. Ooh. And then we could look at drunk driving statistics and stuff like that. But if you guys have any theories on why less people die from alcohol in the UK despite drinking more than the USA, do drop those down in the comments. Next up, let's talk about smoking. Do you know what's smoking? No. You. And the first category we're going to be looking at here is the percentage of people in each country that regularly smoke. In the UK, 14.1% of people over the age of 18 smoke cigarettes, which equals about 6.9 million British people. Quick note that the ONS here switched from Great Britain to total UK. So whereas the drinking statistics were Great Britain specific, these statistics apply to the whole of the UK, Northern Ireland included. In the USA, 13.7% of people over the age of 18 currently smoke cigarettes. That's a lot of people. So by volume, the United States does have more smokers, but in terms of percentage of the population, the United States has slightly less smokers than the UK. So the health point here goes to America. America. Now let's compare deaths. How many people are dying from smoking in each country every year? Let's look at the UK first. According to the ONS, 77,600 people die due to smoking in the UK every single year. So that means that 12% of the UK's deaths are due to smoking. That's a lot, but let's see if the US does any better. Over in the good old US of A, 480,000 people die every year due to smoking cigarettes. And that amounts to 17% of the total death count in the United States. So again, we have the same situation, despite the UK having a greater amount of smokers, percentage wise than in the USA, less people die from smoking in the UK than in the US. I wonder if that has to do with healthcare. Possibly. So the health point here goes to the UK. <laughs> Next up, we're putting on some weight and looking at obesity. Hmm. Oh dear. Oh dear. As we go into this, the CDC and the NHS both use the same exact standard for determining what's considered overweight, obese, and morbidly obese. And that breaks down along BMI like this. If you have 18.5 to 24.9 BMI, you are normal weight. If you have 25 to 29.9 BMI, you are overweight. If you have 30 to 40 BMI, you are obese, and if you are above 40, then you are extreme or morbidly obese. So, based off of those standards, here's how much each country weighs when they step on the scale. First up, let's get the US out of the way because we know, everyone knows, the US has a problem. No news there. 32.5% of people are overweight in America. 30% of people are obese. 7.7% of people are morbidly obese. For a grand total of 70.2% of Americans being either overweight or obese. That's a lot. That's a wow. lot of people. Now you guys know why we have the the wheel, the trolleys. What are they? The automated trolleys. The automated trolleys in all of our supermarkets. That number is shocking, we know, and we have heard a lot of Brits comment on how incredible America's weight numbers are. They are incredible. But before you pat yourself too hard on the back, let's look at how the UK weighs in. In the UK, 35.6% of Brits are overweight, 25.1% of Brits are obese, and 3.6% of Brits are morbidly obese. This adds up to a grand total of 64.3% of Brits being either overweight or obese. This means that the health point here does go to the UK, but not by much. Because we always hear Brits talk about how fat Americans are, we did expect Brits to be thinner themselves, but there's only a distance of about 6% here. The number of overweight and obese people in the UK is rapidly climbing, as it is in America, and so neither country is really doing that good of a job. The US sucks, but I wouldn't necessarily say that the UK is thinner. Now let's take a look at obesity-related deaths in the UK and USA. Quick disclaimer, this number is really, really hard to get a hold of because obesity isn't a cause of death. Diseases are a cause of death, and obesity can increase the likelihood of someone having certain diseases, but when people die, they don't write obesity 
on the cause of death line. For that reason, neither country has hard numbers when it comes to the amount of people that die from obesity each year. Instead, there's general estimates. So in the UK, the government estimates that obesity is responsible for over 30,000 deaths per year, or 4.8% of total deaths. Meanwhile, over in the United States, it's estimated that obesity is associated with 562,700 deaths per year, or 20% of deaths. So I think the health point here goes to the UK. Next up, let's take a look at heart disease. In the US, 30.3 million adults are diagnosed with heart disease. That's currently, right? Yeah, currently diagnosed with heart disease. That's 9% of all Americans. In the UK, on the other hand, we have 7.4 million people who currently have heart disease. That's 11% of all Brits. So their percentage is actually higher. Yes, so the health point here does go to America. America. But I was wondering, because these are diagnosed mm -hmm. cases, the UK is ahead in diagnosed cases, but I know because of the NHS, there's no barrier between people getting diagnosed. Whereas mm -hmm. in the States, you might have people that don't have insurance or can't afford to get diagnosed and then mm -hmm. aren't. So I am curious if there is actually more people with heart disease in America that are just undiagnosed. I didn't have time to find that out, but if you know the answer to that, do let us know. And now let's get grim. Let's look at deaths related to heart disease. In the USA, heart disease is the leading cause of death with one person dying every 37 seconds from heart disease, and a total of 647,000 people dying from heart disease each year. That is 25% of all the deaths in America are from heart disease. It's crazy how many people die from heart disease in America. That's shocking. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get any better across the pond. Heart disease is the leading cause of death in the UK as well, with 170,000 deaths per year, and that is 27.5% of all deaths. So when it comes to percentage of total deaths, more people die of heart disease in the UK than in the USA. And so, yes, the health point here does go to America. America. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It is crazy. So both countries really have a heart disease problem. That's yeah. that's sad. Now let's talk about diabetes. Ooh, diabetes. Diabetes. All right, let's start with the UK. So in the UK, 3.9 million people are currently diagnosed with diabetes, which is 5.8% of the UK's total population. Across the pond in the USA, 34.2 million people are estimated to have diabetes, which is 10.5% of the US's population. When it comes to assigning a point here, the point does go to the UK because the number is smaller. But this is because the United States number is estimated. I couldn't really find a number for mm. actual diagnosed cases of diabetes in America. So yeah, there's that. If you're in the UK though, do let us know how many people are estimated to have diabetes there. Next up, let's talk about astrology. And the first category is how many new cases of cancer there are in each country each year. In the USA, there are about 1.7 million new cases of cancer each year, which is 0.5% of the US's population. Meanwhile, in the UK, there are 367,000 cases of cancer each year, which accounts for 0.5% of the UK population. So it's actually a exactly the it's same. It's the same. Yeah, 0.5% of Americans get cancer every year and 0.5% of Brits get cancer every year. So no health points here. You're both sick. There is a difference though when it comes to the amount of people that die from cancer each year. So let's look at that next. So in the UK, 165,000 people die from cancer each year, which is 26% of all UK deaths. In the US, on the other hand, 609,640 people die from cancer each year, which is 21% of all deaths. Surprised? I am surprised. I'm very surprised. Are you sure this is right? Yeah, I think so. It's really difficult to say why less Americans die percentage-wise and Brits of cancer. It could have to do with treatments. It could have to do with that there's more Americans dying of other things so that- They just kill them off before the cancer gets to <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Americans die from a lot of other stuff, so maybe the cancer rates are lower. It's really difficult to say. All we know is that percentage-wise, more Brits die from cancer than Americans, and therefore, health point goes to America. America. Yeah. 
If you are British or American and you have some insight into this matter, do let us know. Why is it that more Brits die of cancer than Americans? Next category, let's look at total deaths across the board, everyone who dies in each of these countries. So the US population is currently 328.2 million. This year, 2,813,500 Americans will die. This does not count COVID deaths. Put another way, 0.85% of the US population dies every year. Meanwhile, across the pond here in the UK, the population is currently 66.65 million. This year, 616,000 Brits will die, not counting COVID deaths. Put another way, 0.92% of the UK's population will die this year. So every year, hello there. There's a dog sitting over here and he just sneezed. So every year, 0.85% percent of the US population dies and 0.92 of the UK population dies. Less Americans die every year than Brits, so the health point here goes to America. America yeah. Wow. Yeah, I was surprised. This number really surprised me. So again, we'll have to turn this over to you guys. You let us know why that is. Is it because the American population is growing faster than the British population and that's why the percentage is less? Very curious to understand the math and the reasons behind these numbers. But we're just the messenger, we're just telling the numbers and evaluating it based on that. Let's finish off these health statistics. <laughs> <laughs> Let's end this video on a high note and pay tribute to those that, despite the odds, made it to the grand 1-0. Centenarians, of course. <laughs> so, in the UK, there are 13,170 centenarians. That is 0.01% of the population. In the USA, we have 82,000 centenarians, which is 0.02% of the population. This actually really surprised me because you always hear about old people in the UK, you know, the queen sends them a letter and all that. And so I was very much expecting the UK to have more centenarians than the US does. Mm -hmm. But the US actually has in proportion of the population, double the number than the UK does. Well, that's kind of wild. That's crazy. Like, especially with such incentive. Like, if the queen was going to send me something when I turned 100, I'd be like, damn it, I'm going to make <laughs> it gonna there. You're going to make it there. <laughs> <laughs> so the health point here does go to America again, surprisingly. All right, well, we just added it up for the first time, and this is a huge surprise for us, as I'm sure it is for you. The UK actually gathered five health points during this competition, and the US gathered... Eight. Eight. So America wins the health competition. Which country is healthier? I believe we've settled it once and for all. America is healthier than the UK. America. But let us know what you think of our process and if you would evaluate these things the same way. Maybe we're just really bad at math or maybe the American health system really is way better than the UK's health system. <laughs> no, I think the main takeaway here is just that both of our countries are very, very sick and we need to be doing a lot better on both sides of the pond. All that to say, thank you guys so much for watching. Eat your vegetables, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any British culture content. Share this video with your friends if you were surprised by the outcome like we were i will definitely be sharing this with my friends as i am also surprised <laughs> <laughs> we love and appreciate you all we are so happy to be in the uk and we will see you in the next video pet. cheers that was really interesting. Video. That was super interesting. Yeah. I'd love to do another one of these or to analyze other uh -huh. UK versus USA. Like I, I thought that I like the idea of doing the crime statistics one. Yes, we should totally do that.